Thank you, Mr. President. On November 25th this year, the Justice Department and the FBI purported to re respond to six of my oversight letters. But the really strange thing about it, they're responding to six oversight letters with just a single letter. Whenever I see one letter that aims to answer six, I know the government's letter will most likely be hogwash at best. The FBI's November 25th letter doesn't even meet the definition of hogwash. My uh, May 31st, 2022 letter was about then Assistant Special Attorney in Charge Tebow's political bias. The FBI's letter failed to provide any requested records. My uh, July 18th, 2022 letter was about Tebow and then Election Crimes Branch Chief Richard Pilger being involved in an open criminal investigation into former President Trump. That letter was based on whistleblower allegations about defective opening of the investigation. That FBI letter failed to address the concerns that I raised in my letter. Then my July 25th, 20. 22 letter was about Tebow and others at the FBI shutting down investigative avenues into Hunter Biden's separate from the ongoing U.S. Attorney Weiss's investigation. That letter also noted that the investigative avenues were based on verified and verifiable information. That too was based upon whistleblower allegations. The FBI failed to provide any requested records. The August 17th, 2022 letter, billed off of the July 25th letter and requested an organizational chart from the FBI's Washington field office. Seems like a very easy request to answer to. It also posed a series of questions about Hunter Biden's investigation, including how can Hunter Biden's criminal investigation be fully and complete if the FBI improperly shut down verified and verifiable information and sourcing relating to potential criminal activities. No answer on that point from the FBI. The FBI did produce to me an organizational document for their Washington field office. However, it failed production because it wasn't what I asked for. For example, out of the entire Washington field office, the FBI included only six names in the document. And obviously, there's more people involved in that organization. There's dozens of subunits and squads within the Washington field office, and they only provided six names and even redacted some information. Congress and the American people have every right to know how taxpayers' dollars are used to support the Washington field office of the FBI. Then going to my September 26, 2022 letter, that related to the FBI's retaliation against whistleblower Stephen Friend. Mr. Friend raised concerns to his superiors about breaches of FBI policy and procedure in domestic terrorism assessments 
and in those same terrorism investigations. As part of their retaliation to this whistleblower, the FBI placed Mr. Friend on what is called absent without leave status. They also took away Mr. Friend's badge, gun, and suspended his clearance. The FBI's letter didn't even mention Mr. Friends by name, yet purported to respond to my and Senator Johnson's letter about Mr. Friend. The October 13th, 2022 letter, and this is the sixth letter that I've been referring to, related to Hunter Biden's criminal investigation. My letter noted that allegations from whistleblowers indicated that the information provided by to, uh, Tony Bobulinski to the FBI about Hunter Biden's formed a sufficient basis to open full field investigation on a pay to play grounds. However, it's unclear if the IB, FBI took the appropriate action. The letter also noted that records within the FBI's possession and reviewed by my investigative staff indicate that Joe Biden was aware of Hunter Biden's business arrangements and may have involved, been involved in some. The FBI failed to produce any requested records and the FBI is zero for answering my six letters. Now there are a couple elements to the FBI's response letter that I'd like to highlight. And I call it the FBI's response because the Justice Department proper failed to send their own answers to my letters. The letter said in part, quote, when an employee or employee, employee or employees miss the mark and make a mistake, it's critically important that we learn from their, those instances. This means not only holding people accountable, but also taking a close, close look at the larger organization so that we can make necessary changes to policy and training to ensure mistakes aren't repeated, end of quote. I provided six letters to the Justice Department and FBI relating to their mistakes. The letters provided concrete facts. The letters provided evidence. The letters had highly credible whistleblower allegations. There was not a single admission of wrongdoing or some mistake about that was even mentioned in the FBI letter. How can the FBI learn from its mistakes if it refuses to even admit or acknowledge them? Just as important, with respect to all whistleblower allegations that I've made public, it happens that neither the Justice Department nor the FBI have disputed any inaccuracies or disputed any accuracy about my accusations that I'm trying to get information on. That ought to tell all of us something. To the whistleblowers who have approached my office, they are true patriots. Now there's one more part of the FBI's letter that I'd like to highlight. On the third page of this non-responsive letter, the FBI says that this, says this about whistleblowers, and I quote, employees should feel they can raise their concerns about wrongdoing, and if those concerns aren't addressed within their chain of command, 
take them to an appropriate place without retaliation, end of quote. The FBI failed to mention Congress in this process of whistleblowing, and the FBI failed to make clear that employees can immediately go to Congress to disclose wrongdoing. That legal right to blow the whistle should have been explicitly clear in their letter. Now, it happens <clears throat> in several meetings that I've had with Director Ray. He personally assured me that whistleblowers approaching my office with allegations won't face retaliation. Simply put, the Justice Department and the FBI need to get over themselves, show some respect to Congress, as well as the American people represented here. Answer the questions. Admit to the mistakes. Show us corrective action. And let's move on together to fix our institutions for future generations of Americans. The letters I wrote provide a roadmap for the FBI to root out political infection within their ranks and field offices. The letters highlight existential problems deep within the FBI. Based on the response letters that I've been referring to, the FBI has done nothing to root out the political infection. The Justice Department, the FBI's continued failure to do so will lead them on a long, slow, and painful walk to losing more credibility and more trust with the American people. And that's a result that's entirely avoidable if they want to avoid it. I yield the floor.